Hello designers, this is Angie from Raveners Design Academy. Welcome back if you're already subscribed and welcome here if you're new. Today's video will start off a series of videos that cover the basics of rendering and post-production, which will then be grouped into a playlist here on the channel. So let's kick this off with daylight or daytime rendering. Over here is a kitchen scene that's set up with zero light fixtures, and I'm going to depend on V-Ray Sun as my primary source of light. I've also already set up my cameras and added in my textures and accessories to complete the scene. As you can see, I've isolated all my accessories on their own layer and disabled it to render faster for the sake of this tutorial. If I launch V-Ray's Asset Editor in the Lighting tab, there are no lights except V-Ray Sun for now. This is my favorite sun setup that sets the mood every time I render a daytime scene. Let's take a closer look at the parameters. Color and Color Mode basically allow me to create a filter that lets me change the sunlight's color. Intensity is obvious, but Size Multiplier controls how sharp or blurred my shadows are. The bigger the number, the more blurred my shadows will be. Sky Model is a little more complicated than that. And if you refer to the links I have below this video, you'll get to know the models more closely. My favorites are CIE Overcast and CIE Clear. Turbidity controls how much dust there is in the air, and that shifts the color of various sunlight between yellow and orange. Ozone has the same concept of turbidity, but it shifts the color of sunlight between a bluish tint and yellow, which is basically cool or warm. If we head over to the settings tab, in the environment rollout, you'll see these settings that we'll be using later on in this video. Background is basically the image used as background of my scene. GI, or global illumination, is the light emitting from the surrounding environment, or the world. Reflection and refraction are basically useless unless you use glass window panes in your scene, and we'll get into more detail on all of these settings in a few. Outside my scene, I've only added a single tree that will show through the skylight and adds a bit of visual interest. And if I turn on SketchUp's shadows, you'll see that I have sunlight filtering into my scene through a skylight and a window on the side. Let's see how to set up shadows in your scene through SketchUp itself. You can of course use the toolbar or the window on the Duvall tray. And in this little icon over here toggles whether you see shadows or not. I recommend keeping this disabled after you set up your scene. Date and time control the time of day and the month, since the sun is higher during the summer and lower during the winter. They both contribute to the position of your shadows. And that's all we need for now from this window. Moving on, let's give this scene a test render and see what we're dealing with. Quite dark, isn't it? That's because V-Ray's camera isn't like a handheld camera or your mobile's camera. It only works with what you give it and doesn't adjust to compensate. This is making the sunlight look too stark in contrast with all the dark shadows. To fix this, we'll take a page out of the photography handbook and add in some background lights that work as soft boxes, if you may, to help brighten up the space. From the V-Ray light toolbar, I'll add in a rectangle light facing the area with the most shadows, which is the front of the island counter. This will also give the illusion that the space is open with more sunlight streaming in behind the camera. I'll adjust the position so it's right on the floor to avoid weird shadows at the bottom of the counter, but I'll raise it 2mm to avoid clipping with the geometry on the floor. Now let's test this out. Yeah, too bright. I even have the exposures highlight burn set to zero. 
If I turn it back to default, this is what happens. This light definitely needs a bit of tweaking. Let's launch the asset editor and turn down the intensity till it looks okay. Now that's perfect. In the options rollout, I'll set the light to invisible and disable its effect on specular and reflections because I don't want a big white box to appear on any reflective surfaces. I'll also rename this for easier reference. Now my second problem area is these shelves over here, so I'll fix that by using a rectangle light too. To save time, I'll just copy this rectangle light to the other side. I'll also adjust its position so it works well with the window. And copying it copies the settings with it. Now let's run a test and see how we did. The difference is small, but it's there. I'll just drag it further from the wall to make sure it's not clipping with anything. And to see the result with the shelves better, it's best to do a full test render. I'll disable the background lights and render the scene with only the sunlight. As you can see, it's a bit too dark with too many shadows. I'll now enable the background lights and test render that.
Now let's compare the before and after. The difference is quite dramatic. It's really dramatic. I still have three problem areas though. First is the corner of the room where it's the furthest from my background lights. Second one is that shelving area above the fridge. Third is under the cabinets next to the fridge. We'll fix those with a few hidden lights to add a little bit of brightness. Using the rectangle light, I'll place a hidden one over here to compensate the shadow cast by this cabinet. To set it up, I'll just have to make sure that it's faint so it's not very obvious. So compared to the background lights, I'll half the value and see how it goes. I'll also set it as invisible and make sure it doesn't show up in any of my reflections. After I'm done, I'll copy the rectangle light to use it in the rest of my problem areas. The most important part of using hidden lights is that they stay hidden. That's why I'm using obscure spots to place these lights. The reason why I'm placing this light on the opposite side of the shelf is because I have objects placed that the light may hit and that will give it away. Another important thing to note is that you don't want any light widgets clipping with geometry or objects. That will just result in weird shadows or light bleeds showing in through your render. The light might even not work at all. Now to test render our new lights, there we go, the results are subtle which is what we want but also it kinda solved the problem of the areas being too dark. I'll just quickly go in and make this light widget a bit wider so the objects I have placed over here aren't obscuring the lights.
Now to set up the environment, I'll start by loading an HDRI as the environment. To see the results, I'll start the interactive render to start tweaking these settings and see the results of these tweaks. Now I have a blue sky showing through the skylight window, yay! To increase the intensity of the image, I'll amp up the multiplier to 5. For the sake of the tree outside, I'll copy my image into the GI, which in turn makes my sky look pale. I'll amp up the intensity again. It's not doing much, so I'll use the help of reflection and refraction by enabling them and copying my image over as a texture. That kind of fixed my problem, but I need more light for the tree, so I'll amp up the GI even further. It's basically a game of cat and mouse. You can see that the tree is getting brighter every time I adjust the GI value. Oops, I meant to set the value to 70, but added in 10 instead. I'll notice the mistake and fix it in a minute. To show you what I meant by fixing a window pane's distortion, I'll move the camera to face the window on the side. But before doing so, make sure your image's texture placement is set to type environment and mapping spherical. Vera usually does that by default, but it wouldn't hurt to check. Now that the camera is facing the side window, I'll run an interactive render again. It looks so dull. It seriously needs to be fixed. I fixed the GI value to 70, but it barely did anything. So it's time to adjust the reflection and refraction values. Five didn't do much, but 20 definitely did the trick. But since reflection and refraction complement each other, I'll set the value of refraction to 10 while keeping the reflection at 20. That will slightly dim the image a bit since I'm focusing more on the skylight than the window's view. Now I'll stop this interactive render and give this whole scene another test render and compare. A few moments later. If you remember, this is where we started off, a dark dim space with a grey sky. Et voila, this is our space now. Much better, isn't it? 
Here's the full scene without materials and then with materials applied. And that's it for today's tutorial. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you aren't so you get more videos like this every week. Thank you for watching and happy designing.